Let's continue on with the final section. Let's create this background. Now there's also some bats, the moon, and some stars, and some, some uh, trees and that. So let's concentrate on the bats for now. Uh, to start with, we might add a blue background and this black section, just so we can sort of gauge where we're at. So grab a square, or should I say the square tool set, drag out a black background using the control shift and left square bracket to move it to the back or as usual we can right click click on a range and say move to front move to back or you can see the shortcuts there there's a dark section let's move that down a little bit control c control v to duplicate and let's add that blue background So if we actually click on the rectangle itself. All right, so that gives us our basic background. Now, obviously this one's got a bit of shape to it. Feel free to do whatever you want there. I'm going to right click on mine, convert it to curves. Then I'm going to select the, uh, the nudge tool. and just raise mine up a little bit. Now it is sitting behind that green section, so we need to move that green section behind it. And if we want to add all these other little details, well, feel free to go through in your own time and do those. I'm not actually going to waste your time and do those here. I'm more interested in getting these bigger shapes done. Now for the bat, now I have actually drawn some of the bats already. So paste those in and once again, really easy to do if you want to draw the bats. If this is a symmetrical shape, I normally only draw half of it. Uh, I always think whatever's the quickest way to do things. So let's give our pen tool an outline. And if we look at this at half, as half a bat, then what we can do is draw out this half. Now, if you're like me, rather than, if you struggle with the pen tool, I don't struggle with the pen tool, but if you do, draw out the basic shapes. So don't worry about these curves now, but just add points to where the curves would be. So for instance, it's gonna be a curve there, so you wanna start an end point, same with there, start an end point. And here, it's not really a curve, but we'll add a, another point there. We'll put a curve here. So what we can do is we can click on up there because we can drag this bit out there which we'll do in a second same with this put that there put one there put one there put one there put one there and put one there all right close your shape off let's make ours green just so it stands out make sure we're at the front now ignore that outline get rid of the outline as you can see, we've got the basic shape. So now all we need to do is uh, click on our node tool. And if we grab in the center of this, we can now pull out the shape. It's a really good way, a really simple way, if you struggle with the pen tool. It's just a matter of dragging out these shapes. Now this one's a little bit different. So what we will need to do as you can see, we'll grab this handle, pull it in a little bit, we'll grab this one here, pull it out, and then I think we've got some shapes under here. There's a slight curve on that one. Doesn't have to be exact, because we're only using this image as a reference. There's another one there, and then I think this one pulls out slightly there. And let's just round these sections off. And the top of the head. Now, because we've we said this is symmetrical, we've got the right half. Control C, Control V, so that you've got a copy of it. And keep, click on the transform, click on the transform tool, and mirror it. So, 
Now it's just a matter of aligning those shapes up. And of course, anyway, we've got our two shapes. Make sure they're overlapped just a slight, make sure they're aligned. So let's just line those up. Now we want to create one shape out of these two. So we select our shape building tool. Highlight two sections, make sure the plus key is on there or the plus button. We end up with one shape. So change it to a red color. Make sure it's not on the outline, but on the actual fill color. And we'll probably just need to tweak it slightly just where that join is. So once again, no tool. Click on that node tool, hit the delete key to get rid of that extra node. And there you have it, a little bat. So it's as simple as that. So there's our second bat. That one's got an outline, so let's... And then obviously all I've done is Control C, Control V to duplicate, change the color to black. Once again, make sure you're changing the outline, not the outline, but the actual fill color, and then give them a couple of different sizes just to randomize it, different directions, just to give it a bit of an edge. Uh, there you go. Copy and paste them wherever you need them or wherever you like them. Just add a few around here. Um, if you want to scale proportionally, hold the shift key down. That way your proportions will be right when scaling. What have we got? Maybe one more two. One or two, yeah. There you go. Bats are done. What do we do next? Let's tack this moon. Pretty easy. All right, let's draw this moon. So to draw the moon, let me drag out a circle. Obviously the moon's white. Hold the shift key if you want a perfect circle, which I guess we do, it's the moon. Uh, change the color to white. Give that a very slight uh, Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur, just to, that'll probably do. And what we want to do, we want to duplicate this or copy and paste it. You can either control C, control V, and then I'm going to increase that blur so we get the nice outline and send that one to the back. So once again, holding control, I hit the square, left square bracket key, and that's just going to move that behind our ellipse or our other moon, ellipse, circle, ellipse. Okay, what do we need? Probably some, we want to make it look like the moon, so we need some craters. So let's have a bit of fun with a different tool for a change. Let's go into the vector brush tool and let's copy these shapes. So make sure we select the same color with the eyedropper. Um, now, if you are if you start drawing out and you can't see anything, that's because there's no outline. So easiest thing to do, make sure there's an outline by giving it a black color or whatever color you can see with. You can see with. That's good English, isn't it? Whatever color allows you to see what you are drawing, should I say. And let's just roughly go over these shapes. Now, you, they don't have to be anything particular, as long as they look like craters or... countries, whatever. So, once you've done that, don't do what I've done. Um, watching, let's let's go back, actually, and let's check a couple of these things. So we've selected the vector brush tool. We want to make sure that, uh, what do we got? Stay, I, I like stabilizer on there. Just allows you to draw a bit smoother. Now when we finish drawing, we need to make sure, and it's something I always forget to do, that we join the shape at the end. So let's redraw that. Sorry for confusing everyone here. But 
like anything. There's always different ways of doing things. And just make sure that that catches up to that part. To see how that closed the shape off and it's smoothed a little bit. So now that we've got that, let's give it the color of this one here. So there you can, there's our shape. And if you have a look, these shapes are all pretty much the same. So what I would be inclined to do would be copy that one. Put it there maybe. There's two. Um, let's draw out a few more, eh? Just so there's a bit of difference. Let's perhaps use the tool that we're using, which is the vector, what's it called? The vector brush tool. Make sure we've got that one selected. Now, see, this is why I said before, make sure you've got an outline, otherwise you can't see what you're drawing. So let's delete that one. Let's make sure we've got a black outline. As you can probably tell, I don't use this tool very often, but sometimes it's handy for quick and dirty mock-ups like this. Well, let's just draw some first and then we'll change the colors. It's probably easier. So there's another one. Once again, I don't think I closed that shape. So I might fast forward here because essentially we're doing the same thing over and over again. So um, join me once you've finished drawing your craters or your islands, whatever you want to call them, and we'll uh, continue on. So I've finished drawing my uh, planet, uh, my planets, my countries or my craters, whatever you want to call them. Now what we need to do is we want to paste them inside the moon itself so that we can make it look as if it's going around. So what I would do is highlight all of the new shapes that you've, you've created. Uh, for me, I hit Control X to cut, and then I select my moon with the left mouse button, and I hold Control Alt, and then push V on the keyboard, and that will then paste them inside. As you can see. So now I have my moon, and I think it's quite effective. Uh, once you've done that, if you need a few more shapes or whatever, just copy and paste, reverse them around, change their colors slightly just to give it a little bit of contrast. Uh, now you'll probably see that they are taking on the Gaussian blur. If you don't like that, what you can do is just draw or copy another ellipse, eclipse, Eclipse, ellipse. Eclipse would be of the Saturn was in front of the moon. Um, another ellipse, and then paste your shapes into that and don't give it a Gaussian blur. But I actually like that look because I think it gives it more of a planet look. Uh, now we've done that, we can bring our bats to the foreground just to give it that little bit of an interest. I think that looks pretty cool. Minimal effort. Anyway. We could go bigger on the blur around the edge there. So possibly grab, what have we got? The one behind that we need. So hold Alt key to grab the ellipse, which is the one down here, which is behind this moon shape. And then we could even give it a outer glow. Let's have a look what that looks like. Maybe too much. And bring the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, maybe something like that. We could even duplicate it. So let's try and duplicate Control C, Control V. Now that's, let's take off the outer glow on that. Let's make it slightly larger. And then with that, let's bring the opacity down. We can either bring the opacity down. And we could possibly even change the uh, the overlay. So what have we got? I don't mind that. So that's that's with the overlay of the add, and that gives it a nice blue sphere. 
So that blends in nicely. Let's leave it at that. Probably taking away a little bit too much from the moon. It's probably that lip sort of we added before. So maybe let's get rid of the outer glow. Yeah, I don't mind that. You anyway, know, feel free to muck around with that one. Just comes down to personal choice. But what you like better. Okay, now if you want to get even uh, more more creative, come in and add a inner shadow. So with the inner shadow, this will give you a little bit more of a spherical look. And I will probably go to a blue color or a light blue color, just to slightly blend it into that background. There we go. All right. What's next? Uh, the stars, well, they're easy, as we know. We can grab a circle or a sphere and we can get rid of the outline. Give it a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. And that's pretty much it for those. They were. So we can copy that. Control. Make sure we've got them both selected. Uh, right click, click on group. Now, if you want, you can give those a slight blue as well. Uh, now, I'm not going to bore you by copy and pasting them a thousand times on here. I will pause the video and do it. Uh, feel free to do the same and that will finish our stars and we'll go on with the next part of it. Okay, so hopefully now you've got your stars in place. Uh, I've just sort of gone ahead and added shapes in. Really doesn't matter what you add in the background because it is just that. It's just a, just a background. So I've just scribbled out some shapes, as you can see, nothing to them to represent trees. Got some trees here and I made a few adjustments and now they appear to be floating in the sky so we'll just bring those down a little bit and all you're doing is you, you don't really want to take away from the front of your image or the main focus of your image but you do just need something in the background I mean they're probably as you can see um, just something in the background just to add a bit of interest it doesn't have to be anything because the main focus is obviously pumpkin so hopefully yours ends up with something like that uh, as you can see I've put some some trees uh, some gravestones I've done sort of cats or devils whatever you want to call them so and just scattered those around some of these stars could probably be refined a bit better but once again personal choice what I did do, I went and enhanced the background on the moon a little bit more. Uh, I just wanted to stand out just that little bit extra with the craters. And that's pretty much it. Uh, out of the halo. So if you see here, before and after, just all that is, that is an ellipse with a elliptical fill. Uh, sorry, no, it's a solid fill. Um, and a Gaussian blur or a Gaussian blur that just gives a little bit of highlighter and a pumpkin. 